More than three weeks after Robert Mueller handed over his report to the Attorney General, we should learn more about what's in the almost 400-page document. But how much of it will we actually see? Joining me now from Baltimore, Senator Ben Cardin, the number two Democrat on the Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, before we get to the Mueller report, is the president's idea of shipping migrant detainees to sanctuary cities all around the country, is that legal? And if the president goes ahead with it, what will Congress do? My understanding is it's not legal. There is no budget for that purpose. Uh, this is a clearly a political uh, move for the president. He's using the immigrants as pawns in his political game of chess. Uh, he's not really interested in a solution. He's more interested in preserving a political issue for the 2020 election. You may not like the president's possible solution here, but I think you have to agree that there's a crisis on the border. I want to put up some numbers. In March of 2018, last year, 50,000 people were caught crossing the border. Last month, it was more than 103,000. And the big spike is in family asylum requests. In 2018, DHS decided these are bureaucrats in 76 percent of cases that asylum seekers had established credible fear about what would happen to them if they were returned to their countries. But when they actually finally saw an immigration judge, only 16 percent were actually granted asylum. Meanwhile, there's a backlog of 800,000 cases and a waiting list. It takes about two years to be heard by a judge. So I guess the question really is, and Sarah Sanders brought it up, what is the Democratic plan? I know you talk about border security and all that. There clearly is a problem here with people gaming the system on asylum. What's the Democratic plan to stop that? What Democrats would like to see is let us take up legislation to reform our broken immigration system. We can start with the bill that passed the Senate a few years ago. There have been changes that we have to deal with, including the Dreamers and TPS, and we know a lot more now about uh, the budget needs at the border. Let us take up legislation. Mitch McConnell, the majority leader of the Senate, has yet to bring a bill to the floor of the United States Senate so that we can debate this. But, but sir, we, debate we, know that, we know comprehensive immigration reform, I mean, just as a practical matter, is going to go nowhere between now and 2020. Why not specific niche changes, if you will, to deal with this explosion of people seeking asylum? Chris, I'm going to disagree with you. If the president would 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 support comprehensive immigration reform and work with Democrats and Republicans, we have the consensus to pass comprehensive immigration reform, but the president doesn't want that to happen. Certainly, we'll take up niche issues. We have to take up issues. I hope that we could get things accomplished, but what we need is comprehensive immigration reform. And secondly, you talk about more people coming to our border, we have to deal with the reasons why migrants are migrants in the first place. And that is, don't cut off the aid to Central America. Let us work to reduce the flow out of countries. Would you agree that there's a problem with an asylum system where three quarters of the people who come in, they're, they're given credible fear, excuses or status, they're able to stay in the country for two years, uh, there's an 800,000 backlog, uh, and then only 16 percent, I guess it is, yeah, 16 percent actually are granted asylum? Do you think there's a problem with that? I would acknowledge that we have an immigration problem in this country. Our immigration laws are not what they should be. Asylum is a very important policy for America, and it's a global uh, value that we protect people that are in fear of their lives. So we need a, we, sh we want to lead on asylum, but we need to have an orderly process. And because we don't have an orderly immigration process, we find that the asylum laws are not working the way they should. All right, let's get to the Mueller report. Attorney General Barr testified before Congress this week, and he made quite a stir talking about the investigation of the Trump campaign. Here he is. I think spying on a political campaign is a big deal. It's a big deal. Yes, I think spying did occur. I am not saying that improper surveillance occurred. I'm saying that I am concerned about it and looking into it. Senator, do you agree that there should be a full investigation of how the FBI and other intelligence agencies acted in looking into the Trump campaign in 2016 and then on into 2017? Chris, what I think the American people want to see first 
is the release of the Mueller report so that we can draw our own conclusions and do not have to rely on the conclusions of Attorney General Barr, whether it relates to the president's involvement, what Russia did in our election, or how the FBI handled the investigation. We need to see the full report. Yes, there needs to be redactions as it relates to source information or sensitive information that has nothing to do with the president or these issues. But we need to see the report. You need to see the report. And the American people need to draw their own conclusions. So we're, we're getting dribs and drabs from the attorney general as to parts of the report. Let us take a look at the full report. Then that's a fair question to ask. Well, okay, but you're going to get the report, apparently, uh, unless the attorney general is delayed by Tuesday, so in the next 48 hours. And, the, you know, a lot of people say there are legitimate questions here about how the whole investigation started into President Trump. Was there bias on the part of FBI agents, the FISA warrants, all kinds of stuff? Isn't that a legitimate issue to be brought up as well? You say we're going to get the report in 48 hours. I'll wait to see if we get the full report in 48 hours. I hope that we do. We then need to read the report and be under, able to understand that. Then I hope it tells us information more than we have today about Russia's tactics of trying to influence our election so that we can protect ourselves against future attacks from Russia, tells us exactly how the president and his campaign were involved in this so we can draw our own conclusions and how the investigation was done. But l let me ask you about this. It, let's assume, and I think it's fair to assume, that, that Attorney General Barr is not lying to the American people. He says that According to the Mueller report, the special counsel said he found no collusion by the president with Russia, and, and nobody was indicted for that, including any of the people around him that a lot of people had talked about. And he clearly didn't find overwhelming evidence or a preponderance of evidence of obstruction. So is that the best use of Congress's time to continue to argue about something that uh, the special counsel investigated for two years, or should you be trying to solve the country's problems? I think Mr. Mueller was looking at a criminal standard, standard beyond reasonable doubt. So let's, again, take a look at the source documents. He did say that there was clear evidence in regards to obstruction of justice. Whether it reached the standard that it could be proved beyond reasonable doubt is, is an issue that he, Mr. Mueller, did not draw a conclusion. Uh, Mr. Barr did draw a conclusion. The American people need now to draw a conclusion. Remember, the principal reason for this investigation is that Russia attacked our democratic system in the 2016 elections. We need to take steps to prevent us, uh, prevent this country from being attacked again and compromised by Russia. This report is going to be very valuable so that we can take the appropriate steps. Congress passed legislation to deal with this, bipartisan legislation. I was involved in crafting that legislation. I would hope that this report will give us an additional blueprint on what we need to do to shore up our protections in America, but also understand how the Trump campaign and Mr. Trump interacted with the Russians. Senator Cardin, thank you. Thanks for sharing your weekend thank with you. us. Please come back, sir.